Hello everyone. So uh, I'm Raghunath Jawahar and I work on uh, work in uh, Mobs and Geeks. So uh, today we're going to talk about Android Beyond handhelds. And uh, what I do is uh, I work primarily on Android, and I've also worked on a lot of different Android devices so far, like uh, mobile tablets, and we also work on set of boxes and uh, other other uh, devices, which we are going to talk about. Uh, we also do a lot of uh, open source work, and uh, how, how many of you guys uh, work on Android? Only one, right. two, three? Right. Oh, you, you've tried working on Android. So, you, you've tried working on Android. Aspiring. Sorry? Aspiring. You're aspiring to work on Android. All right. So uh, How many of you have written uh, programs for uh, devices uh, that, that, that are not computers? Like uh, you, you write web applications, you write desktop applications, other than that? You've tried programming for the other devices, like embedded devices? OK. Mobile. So, so uh, mobile. Anyone, uh, yeah, any other devices like Arduino? Is it microprocessor? Microprocessor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, yeah, that's, that's a good answer. Micro, yeah, you have written programs for microprocessor. Microcontrollers, like? 85, 51, 86. Okay. All right. So uh, we uh, we also do a little bit of work on that. And uh, to talk about our open source work, uh, we have worked on some open source uh, projects. Uh, and those we have uh, published uh, using the Apache license. And uh, we have written a, a library for validation. It's called as Android Cheripar. And that library is currently being used by uh, Wikipedia's official Android app. So uh, we have quite some uh, open source experience for the past two or three years. So uh, today, uh, when I'm talking about uh, devices that are not uh, handhelds, like uh, your typical phones and tablets, what, what devices comes into your mind? Automobiles, yeah. For navigation and all, yeah, we, we use Android for that. Car. Cars, yeah, cars. Then? Household appliances. Household appliances such as? Television, yeah, TV. Then? Fridge, then? Home security systems, then? Set of boxes, then? Watches. So, anything else? Anything else? Glasses, glasses. So uh, Android is literally getting everywhere, right? So Android, uh, initially, it started as an uh, cam uh, operating system for uh, camera cameras. OK, that's how Andy Rubin wanted the product to be. But considering the market size for camera phones, uh, they quickly pivoted to uh, mobile devices instead. So they came to know about all the competitors who were working on uh, smartphone operating systems. And Android eventually became a smartphone operating system. So when I talk about uh, watches, what, what is this? What is this? What is this device that you, you're seeing on the screen? Is it Samsung? Gear, Samsung Gear. Anyone tried this watch before? No one? Glad that you didn't. So I was up to this uh, Samsung uh, showroom in Chennai. And you know this was the worst, absolutely worst device I have ever tried. You know, if you want to, people think like you know it's like a James Bond gadget, but you know you'll be completely disappointed if you buy this one. Like it's somewhere around 20, 25 k, and it is not. But but it is a good initiative because Android being open source. Sorry. Yes. Samsung guy is watching live. Okay. Okay. So so at least at least they they're getting the voice out, right? So that, that's why maybe they did uh, gear the, the second watch, right? They, they did the second watch. It's a really good initiative because Android being a very op uh, open source operating system, people uh, started to try different things uh, doing it. You know, they fork a copy and they tried something that is really different, that is uh, Google Watch. Though they, it didn't uh, come out very well, uh, I think uh, uh, Samsung or other. There's another watch right in front of you, which is an Android watch. You which one? OK. So uh, who, whose watch is that? Yours. OK, so this is also a watch. I was, thank God. Oh, it has a camera too. Right. OK. Best China ripoff. 
watching. Okay. So you like it? Um, the battery life sucks. Okay. <laughs> the processor is very good. Great. So, so it's not just uh, you know the big players. Uh, we have a lot of small players who are uh, doing a really good job with Android. So uh, Samsung Gear, you know, uh, they claim that uh, it's uh, good for using phones. Uh, for using, you know, you can pair it with a phone, an Android phone, and you can uh, make calls and you can also answer calls. Not good for driving because you have to keep it close to you like this when you drive, so uh, it doesn't make a good uh, choice for. Well. Uh, during driving, and you can also take uh, photographs or uh, you know uh, videos if you want to play James Bond. But what I would I used to say it to my colleagues that if anyone is wearing that watch, I'm going to use a hammer on that. <laughs> yeah, it's really you know annoying, a little bit annoying, but it's it's purely my own uh, views on that, my personal opinions on that. And it can also uh, show you other things like uh, the temperature, and if you have any mails, you can uh, read the uh, so at least the subject matter on it, the subject of the email. And it also reply to uh, SMSs and other uh, messages, text messages. It, uh, it also uses uh, voice input, which you know you can uh, make short replies using talk by talking to the watch. So uh, that's about uh, Samsung Watch, the Samsung Gear. And what what is that? It's a washing machine. Who who made this? But who who made this? Small. Any clues? Samsung, Samsung yeah. Smart. Yeah, Samsung. Actually, Samsung is doing a lot of things with Android. So uh, can you imagine what kind of things you can do with this, uh, uh, you know? You can control? Yeah, you can control the washing machine with your mobile phone. That's, that's a good option. What kind of options can you, what kind of uh, things can you do with that? Stop it and run it. Good thing to play. With kids, <laughs> so what else? What else can you do with this? Except taking the cloth out. Except taking the cloth out. Okay, so uh, it allows you to uh, set water levels and temperature of your water. You can also set profiles based on the fabric that you're washing, like uh, is it denim, is it uh, cotton clothes, or is it synthetic clothes, things like that, or is it, is it heavy blankets? And you can also uh, check for det detergent levels. And you can also set the RPM of uh, the you know uh, the, drums. the drums spin rate, and most of them they don't, we don't we are not concerned about most of the features right <laughs> again. So uh, maybe maybe we we are uh, at the beginning of an uh, era where uh, all your home appliances could interact along with your home and uh, you know really br build a home a really smart home or a smart uh, network of all your appliances. So what is this? What is this? Fridge. So uh, who who made this? Samsung. Yeah, Samsung. Once again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so whatever I put on the screen, you're going to say Samsung. Is it so? So what what, do you, what can you do with this? Refrigerators. Make things cool. Make things cool. That's what you do with refrigerators, right? Things. What else? What else do you do with uh, a fridge that is powered with Android? Identify the, of Identify the number of things you have. Yes. Order stuff automatically. Yeah, order stuff automatically for you. Okay, that's that's a really nice feature. But uh, I I don't think this supports that feature. But maybe in the next version. So what kind of addiction are we talking about here? Uh, we, we, we used to keep the, the checking the fridge every time, right? Okay. Uh, the same will happen on the phone. Okay, so yeah. you get one new message and you go yeah. and look at this uh, screen on your refrigerator. Okay, okay. So is it going to be a good thing or a bad thing? Mental. <laughs> At least I, I don't think you can take selfies with this uh, refrigerator. <laughs> so what else? What else can you do with this refrigerator? Any any useful apps that you can think about? Okay, okay, that's that's definitely a good use case, you know. 
you get a, a new a box of chocolates, then <laughs> you, your mom bought you some chocolates, right? Okay, that's that's a good thing. What else? Like recipes. Sorry, recipes. Yeah, it, it's good for recipes. You know. Then we can get notified when power goes off or uh, something. Okay, so something like all right, all right, things like that. We're in Tamil Nadu. Yeah, right. <laughs> what? Okay, so how many ba how many eggs you have, and how many bottles of milk you have got in your refrigerator? Things like that. Okay, then they'll start showing up ads that go to buy butter from the new uh, place that is nearby. Right, things like that. Right, right, good, good use cases. So uh, you can also run common applications like Evernote, and you can also have other uh, you know recipe applications, all recipes, all the cook things like that. So your mom can start watching the screen and cook new recipes for you? Is that going to happen? And uh, push bullet, you know, there is an app called as push bullet where you could uh, enter a, a list of items in case if you are missing some items or if something things are running out of your stock, you can enter all those things and when the husband is out, right, just send a push notification and you get the list right down to his mobile phone, right, things like that. So uh, that is one use case because it can, it is also able to run traditional Android apps unlike the uh, watch and uh, washing machine we were talking about, right? So what is this? Smart TV. Smart TV. What what can you do with this? Ever anyone seen an ad for this TV? No, no. Okay. Now go go and search for it on YouTube. It's running on your home. It's running on your home. So you do this. You don't, you don't do that? This, this, that? You do this? No, it's not touch. No, it's not touch. No, uh, you know, gesture based. Right? You, you don't that? So you have a smart TV? Okay, you, you're not aware of the, of the volume control or uh, you're not aware of changing the channels using gestures? No, no. Waving your hands? You don't do that? No, no, I don't aware of that. You're not aware of that? Okay, go try it at home today. Right? You're not probably used to. <laughs> Is it by a window? Now, is it by a window? You know, your TV is by a window. You have to do this all from here. <laughs> it's not set up like that, right? Okay, that's a good thing. So, uh, what's what's good about the smart TV? Yes. Yeah, you can tweet while watching TV. Yeah, this someone is going to score a uh, hundred, right? Or this show is not good. Things like that. So what else can you do using a smart TV? If it is indicated mostly, we can actually see ads. And if we want to straight away buy them, we can just go and click. Just do the. Okay, so you want to buy products while watching TV? Yeah, we will watch the ads, but we will say, okay, I will buy it later. Okay, so you're going to you're not going to procrastinate. You're going to do it right then and there, right away, right? Okay. Yes, yes. Husbands will go into trouble. Ah. What else? What else can you do with Smart TV? Yes, I switch into an AWS machine and see the crawling status. Okay, so you can also access internet, things like that. Use Facebook, all those ordinary things. And uh, the good thing, one good thing about uh, the Smart TV is, uh, if you have ever programmed for Android, you know there is this thing called as uh, device independent pixels. You know, we have a lot of different uh, devices with different screen sizes with different resolutions and densities. So whenever you uh, try to design something for Android, you'll have to do it in a more uh, prudential manner so that it looks the same on each and every device. Uh, what uh, Google has done with the smart TV is, uh, you take your phone, right? Y you have it right in front of you, and you place a smart TV 10 feet up, uh, 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 far away from you, right? The same, uh, the UI on the phone and the uh, TV will look similar, got it? So if you're de designing an app for uh, a television, right, it is almost like doing this, uh, doing it for your uh, uh, what do you say, your mobile phone or your tablet. So that is one uh, really good thing that. Uh
set up box. Yeah, it's a set up box. So come on, uh, tell me what what do you uh, think about a set up box? What can you do with a set up box? We have uh, programmed for set up boxes also, Android set up boxes. Change channels. Subscribe for channels. Then download movies. Which is which is. <laughs> <laughs> then, okay. So, what else can you do with set of boxes? Watch TVs, schedule, things like that. Okay. What? Schedule recordings. Yeah, you can do that. And there are a lot of uh, small players uh, when this in the set of box market. You know, it doesn't have to be Samsung, Apple, or uh, Google. There are a lot of lot, lots and lots of uh, players who are manufacturing boxes, uh, set of boxes. I, I have the same box with me. I think, yeah. So uh, there are a lot of uh, Chinese manufacturers who are uh, rolling out a lot of uh, set of boxes for different uses, for for different uh, customized to different uh, needs also. So what is this? I haven't seen this. You haven't seen this? Yeah, these are your desk phone, a typical desk phone. And uh, can anyone guess what this phone is called, or what the development kit of this phone is called? What? No. This this product was launched some three or four years ago, and uh, we we were able to work on this. You know, we were doing some testing for these guys. It's called as the Glass uh, SDK. It, it's called as the Glass SDK. Now this is a completely different product. It's from uh, a, a company called as Cloud TC. Okay, this is a really old product, uh, and it contained Android versions 2.1 and 2.2, I think. Uh, it, it's a pretty old, uh, you know, uh, initiative, uh, long before. Long before Google Glass was in uh, vicinity, uh, the the, the SDK is still called as Glass SDK, but uh, it's completely different from what Google is uh, doing. So, what can you do with this uh, desk phone? Typical use cases. Prank what? Prank calls. Prank calls. <laughs> Prank calls. What else? Video conferencing. Then. Think of it, uh, yeah. You could you could record. Uh, you think of it as a, a phone on, on uh, in the reception. What else can you do with this? You can you can uh, confirm reception. Uh, sorry, appointments, right? You could take notes, things like that. So uh, there are a lot of other use cases also. And what is this? Yes. Earphone. It's a, yeah, it's it's a yeah, it's a smart glass. It's called as uh, M100, and uh, this uh, it it uh, it is unlike glass. Actually, glass overlays uh, its display over your field of vision, right? You're looking at something, that, uh, when you turn on glass, it is right. It overlays your field of vision, right? But uh, this doesn't do that. Uh, it uh, is placed uh, right below your cheekbone, and it's just like a display. Uh, it, it shows you a display. Uh, they call it a smart glass, but uh, uh, it just pr uh, gives you a 320 to 240 uh, size screen. It places the screen in front of you. And uh, there are a few use cases for this uh, device. And uh, I'm also currently consulting a client on this product. So it, it is also a glass. And uh, there are other devices that I have not mentioned here. OK, apart from, uh, 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 there are a few devices that I have not mentioned here. Like uh, gaming consoles, right? There, uh, I think uh, even Sony came out with a gaming console using uh, based on Android. And uh, there are also other uh, devices like music players, MP3 players that are based on Android, right? And what is this? It looks like a motherboard. Okay, Ethernet. USB and audio jacks. 
Is anyone reading the title on the top? No. <laughs> so what 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 is it? Is a is a single board computer SBC, right? So what can you do with Raspberry Pi? You saw the demo. You saw the demo. <laughs> So why, what took you guys to so long? Uh, so uh, it's SBC and uh, you have images, Android images for Raspberry Pi as well. Okay. And uh, when it comes to home automation, you know, uh, Raspberry Pi comes into the play. You know, you can install whatever you want, you know, any, any Linux distros or uh, if you want, you can install Android and uh, it depends upon the comfort level of your familiar familiarity with the platform. And you know you can use this as a master, and you can have uh, Arduino uh, boards or Ar Arduino uh, microcontrollers in different rooms, and uh, uh, you can uh, route the inputs. Like you know, you have a, a infrared proxy, or you have uh, you know uh, other you know, light detectors or motion detectors. You can connect them uh, via the Ar Ar Arduino board to your uh, Raspberry Pi using an ether Ethernet cable. Yeah. So uh, the yeah, yeah, you, you, you can do, a, there are lots of possibilities. And you know, when, when it comes to home automation, there are uh, different, uh, device, uh, different platforms that are available that you could use to uh, build, re really uh, do it yourself uh, home automation systems. You, you don't have to buy something from the market, right? So uh, these are uh, some of the initiatives that other people have uh, taken to, you mean, uh, use Android uh, in different ways, you know, very innovative manners. And we have saw, seen a lot of different use cases. And some of them are uh, mere initiatives, but you know, it's just a start. And uh, we know things are changing very quickly in, um, as we speak, right? A lot, of people are a lot of people are doing a lot of things. And when it comes to uh, Android devices, more, all the Android devices are all the same, you know, uh, the debug bridge is the same. So uh, it doesn't matter that uh, you're working on uh, a glass or uh, on a wearable computer or you're very, uh, working on a setup box or if you're working on a, you know, a camera or a gaming console, whatever be that. Uh, the debugging process is, is almost the same, right? It's almost the same. So what you do is uh, initially, uh, you have to, obviously you have to connect your uh, device to your laptop if, you, if it has a user, user interface, uh, USB interface. Uh, sometimes in cases uh, like set of boxes, you may not have a USB port. So in that case, you know, uh, there is a way to uh, disassemble uh, the box and you usually get a COM port. You can connect a COM to USB converter and you can connect it to your uh, PC and use it for debugging. So the first thing we have to do is to uh, go to settings and developer options. Then you have to enable the debug mode on your Android device. Uh, it could be any device. And once you're done with that, uh, you have to check uh, if uh, all the drivers, corresponding drivers are installed because drivers are very essential. Uh, if it is plug and play, you don't have any problems, but if it is not a plug and play device, then you'll have to get the appropriate drivers installed to get it working. And uh, you know, there is, if you're using Ubuntu, there is a 51 hyphen Android rules file where you have to uh, enter the USB vendor, vendor ID, okay? Uh, and uh, even if you do all these basic setup, you know, uh, there are times where certain devices will not be detected by your uh, PC or your Macintosh or, or any, any development device that you use for that matter. So uh, in that case, what you have to do is to get the USB vendor ID. Uh, I, I, uh, uh, the thing is, uh, you have the drivers installed, you have uh, the debugging mode enabled, and you have your device connected to your uh, development machine. And uh, the next thing you have to do, uh, uh, and still if your device is not detected, uh, and still if your device is not detected, you have to find the USB vendor ID. On the Macintosh, you can do it through the system preferences where you can go and check uh, your USB devices, list of your USB devices, and uh, uh, get the vendor ID for your uh, device that you're using for development. And in, in Windows, you can do the same by using a device manager, go to device manager, and then uh, from the list of other uh, devices, uh, find your device, you know, the appropriate Android device, and get get the vendor ID. It, uh, the vendor ID is highlighted here, but I don't think that is visible. You have this ven underscore and a four-digit uh, hexadecimal code. That is the vendor ID. So uh, once you get the vendor ID, you go and uh, edit uh, the ADP underscore USB dot INI, which is present inside the dot Android folder of your uh, user folder. 
right uh, on any machine it is inside the your user folder and uh, in every line you have uh, each line can have only one vendor id so if you are using different uh, devices that are not supported uh, or that are that are not de detected by adb you'll have to enter one vendor id per line and then you have to uh, restart your uh, adb now uh, if your adb is in the path the android debug bridge if uh, so android debug bridge is uh, allows you to issue and receive debug commands to your device okay that's the primary way of communicating with your device uh, during development so uh, you have to kill the adb server restart it and if you do uh, adp devices uh, if you have uh, pr properly followed all the previous instructions your device will be visible got it so you don't have to be afraid uh, uh, if you're going to develop for uh, the m100 or if you want to develop for google glass or uh, watch for that matter so uh, when you're developing for those uh, machines you know uh, this uh, step these steps are uh, these steps will help you uh, get started okay and so far we have seen about uh, about the initiatives other companies and other uh, individuals have may, uh, have done to uh, take android beyond handheld devices and now uh, we're going to say uh, look into two initiatives two initiative that uh, google itself has come through right what what are two initiatives what are those initiatives any any cases google itself has uh, forked uh, android to different uh, well, r and d they do a lot of things in r and d what what is publicly uh, known google yeah google glass uh, it runs on android it, it runs on a forked version of android so what is the other initiative google has taken and and where sorry home automation yes yeah home automation they have this adk thing right uh, where you can connect uh, the uh, arduino adk with your uh, via your usb right. yeah so uh, I, i'm not sure if they have forked android for that but th that is a home automation uh, was a initiative that was taken like 2 3 years ago mega i think it's arduino mega adk uh, that was the first uh, device from arduino i think uh, the board from arduino i think so uh, what is the other initiative android watch what is it actually called android where yeah and where okay so, uh, has anyone uh, developed for android uh, for glass yes nobody uh, anyone try sorry i i develop apps for glass yeah <laughs> okay so uh, we don't have the device actually we do it via team weaver and we also do it via one more thing you know uh, there is only one device that uh, my client actually owns um, uh, he's in the us and uh, one thing we do is we do uh, development via uh, team weaver right he plugs the device onto his machine and i uh, get a remote to his machine i remote access to his machine and i develop uh, the thing and uh, the other way we do it is you know um, it's somewhat uh, quirky uh, there is something called as paper trail has anyone used paper trail is this log appender paper trail okay it it uh, you know it uh, looks for it you can write logs to paper trail right so what we do here is uh, we have a syslog appender okay uh, it's a, it, it's usually a, it's a log uh, we have log back log for j and uh, we have a syslog appender what it does is it starts uh, writing logs to paper trail.com right and when our client is using the uh, device uh, the gla uh, uh, google glass you know we get log messages on our screen live so that's the way we are currently debugging uh, glass apps you know we don't have a direct access to glass so yeah y you can ask him to get in touch uh, so uh, no we will be learning but we'll be able to help out each other right so uh, what is glass what what does it do any any videos or any ideas about glass no okay so uh, glass looks like that you know most of you would have seen that uh, i don't have a device actually to show you uh, how it uh, looks so this is the anatomy of uh, glass right uh, okay I, I i don't think this diagram is totally accurate uh, so uh, this is the camera all right and here you have something called as a prism uh, which is actually a display that is uh, around uh, 300 and sorry 
320 into 260, uh, you know, 320 by width and 260 by height. Uh, so that is the resolution of the uh, prism that is here, uh, display that is here. And uh, this actually does not have a GPS, okay. G the GPS uh, location services uh, are availed from your Android phone or your iOS phone, right, uh, or your uh, iPhone any device that is paired, uh, it does not have a built-in GPS, okay. The CPU is actually present here and you have uh, microphones, you have microphones and uh, there, this is not actually a speaker, it is actually a interface for your earphone, okay. There is a in micro USB interface for your earphone and what you see here, it has a, a battery and it also has a bone conduction transducer. It is called, uh, anyone has heard of bone conduction trans transducer? It is not actually a new technology. So what happens is uh, when you are using glass with speakers maybe, if you are using headphones, it is a bit distracting, you know, you will not be able to listen to ambient noise, things around surrounding you, got it? So a bone conduction transducer, it sits right behind your ear, right? And uh, transmits sounds through your bone into your eardrum, okay? So that way you will be able to hear uh, the conversation via the that is happening via glass as well as the surrounding uh, noise, got it. So uh, this device is actually, uh, they have released something called as an explorer uh, edition and it costs somewhere around $1,500, okay. And it is available for public purchase uh, in the US, so if you are in the US, uh, you could buy it directly from Google. Uh, but Google has plans to release this device uh, by next year for uh, affordable price, what they say. Uh, that's somewhere around four ninety nine dollars, right? Uh, and also, uh, they have done some really good job with uh, the camera because uh, you know uh, when someone is wearing a glass, you know, you get this weird feeling, like me, you know, uh, someone wearing a Android watch, and I start looking out for hammers, right? Uh, you don't like uh, you know people filming filming at you when you're talking at. Them. So what Google has done is they have a light, okay, the, a light, uh, a recording light. So whenever the camera is on. You could see, you will know that someone is uh, recording you, okay. Th that is not uh, the genius part. The thing is, if someone tries to hide the light, you know, uh, by using a paint or uh, he tries to conceal the light, uh, I mean the LED, uh, the camera won't start, okay. That is a hardware feature and that cannot be tampered either via software or via hardware, okay. That is one thing, but uh, we do not know until someone really tampers with it, right. <laughs> So, uh, one thing when you are writing, uh, when I am talking about programming for Android, uh, you know, when you are writing programs for Android, uh, there are certain constraints, like you still have the same set of APIs, you have access to the same set of APIs, but there are certain constraints, uh, like when you have a tablet, right, uh, when you, for example, let us take a TV, the, the screen layout is massive, right, the real estate on the TV is very massive, and you can, uh, show any number of info, any uh, any amount of information that you want to show to your user, got it? And when it comes to tablets, you can still show a lot of information to your user, but not as much as you can show it to them on uh, a smart television, got it? And when you're using a phone, a phone has a again it has a smaller uh, screen size. So what happens? Uh, there are uh, 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 the number of things that you can do with your phone is actually uh, a little bit limited, right? And when it comes to glass, the, the UI is really, really sle uh, very small, right? It's somewhere around uh, 320 into 260. It's, it's really small for, uh, you know, doing a lot of things. So the size of the screen itself constrains uh, the amount of things that you could uh, do with glass, provided you still have access to the same set of APIs. Uh, you know, you can uh, only, uh, and also the ways of interacting with the UI is also limited, right? And the, the side, the, uh, the rim, right, the side uh, area where uh, your uh, CPU is hosted, it also has a trackpad which allows you to navigate through oh, applications, the glass applications, right. And there are also a limited set of gestures that you can do to interact with the device itself. It is not like uh, running your hands all over the screen to do things you want. So uh, in order to uh, make it efficient, you know, you have to really uh, think through a lot of things and do only things that matter most to the users, okay. So that is kind of uh, challenging when you are programming for glass 
and uh, the UI should also be very consistent and supportive to the developer. Okay, and that is where uh, Google has come out with the notion of uh, I, mean, I say the Glass team at Google they have come out with a notion called as cards. Okay, so they they have something called as a card where you could uh, show limited pieces of information like primary text, secondary text, and an image, or primary sec text, sec secondary text, tertiary text. That's it, right? Things like that. Uh, and this notion of cards uh, is not a new thing because uh, how many of you have uh, Android phones here? How many of you have been using Android phones for a really long time? Like like 2009, 2010? Okay. So uh, have you see, uh, seen the older Play Store application? Yes. Yes? Do you remember how it used to look like? Okay, so uh, how many of you use uh, play, the Play Store? Okay, you use Play Store? Okay, how many of you use the music player that is Play Music? Okay, you use Play Music. And how many of you use uh, Play Books? No? And play Movies? Okay, you play, use Play Movies. Do they look the same? The newer version, not the old one. Newer version, do they, do they look the same? Yeah. Similarly. Yeah, they they look similar. Only the color is different. You know, uh, you have uh, orange for music player and the play is some green. green. Yeah, play is green and books is blue. So only the color of uh, the theme is different, but the way items are presented are the same. Got it? You go to the Play Store. You have an app. The app is placed inside a card. It has the I product icon. It also has the name, description, price. Right? You go to the uh, you go to Play Books. You have the book, you have the you know, name of the book, uh, author of the book, and the price of the book. And then you go to play movies, you have the uh, poster, movies poster. You have, so they started using cards because uh, it is one of the most efficient way to display any kind of product. Got it? So uh, Android, uh, and, and, uh, and this, this UI pattern has uh, been working very well. So and uh, the Google guys, uh, the Glass guys have uh, adopted the same for uh, other uh, devices as well, like the Google Glass and as well as uh, Android Wear, which we are going to talk about. So uh, this is how a card looks like. You know, it has very essential, absolutely essential pieces of information. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay. And in uh, Android, uh, you have a home screen, and uh, Google Glass has something called as a timeline. Right, and uh, the timeline is not much different from uh, the home screen in, phys in in terms of physical appearance. Uh, you can you'll be able to uh, swipe left and right through your home screen in, on Android, and in timeline you'll be able to do the same. But a timeline is you know whenever you start Glass, you you're brought to a home screen where you where, where there is a clock, okay, and to the right side you have the past events, okay, events of the past. And on to the left side, you have uh, the present as well as the future events, right? If you have schedule, schedule an alarm, it will appear to the left of your timeline, got it? And if your, one of your friends has posted a photograph or a status update, that will appear to the right side of the timeline. And you can navigate, if you uh, do this, you know, if you navigate forwards, uh, you will be taken to your history. And if you navigate backwards, uh, you will be taken to the future, like? The, the future, right? It's like pushing the cards, older cards in the front, or pulling the newer cards to the back, right? Uh, so uh, this uh, is a timeline where uh, this is the uh, this is kind of the home screen, and uh, you can insert cards, timeline cards, using the Glass SDK, or you can you can you can also use a Mirror API. Mirror API is something uh, Google offers you to create applications uh, and de uh, deploy them to the cloud. Okay, and the Glass SDK or the GDK is based on uh, the Android SDK. Uh, you can use uh, use it to write native applications. Got it? So these are uh, different kinds of card uh, flavors. The first one is only a text-only card. There is only text, and the second one is a full bleed image card where uh, you can have an image as a background and you can have text on it. And the last one is a mosaic card where uh, you can have a mosaic of uh, images to the left, or right, or uh, the top. And you can also have a text along it, uh, along with the card. And uh, whatever you see here is we have uh, a maximum of two lines of text, nothing more than that, a primary text and a secondary text. Okay, here most of the uh, 
thing is the primary text you have the subject and as the secondary text you have uh, the you know um, maybe the a time or any, anything uh, that is second uh, that takes uh, the second uh, priority okay so this is some code I, I don't think you can see this code okay uh, this is this shows you how to uh, instantiate a card you know card is equal to new card and you set uh, the text set foot text and you set a footnote you get a card view and then you could uh, insert it to a timeline or uh, if you are running a full scale application you could uh, you know uh, insert it to your card scroll view where you could scroll cards and there is something called as a live card where you know uh, cards or stat can be static or they could be live cards a static card does not uh, change any information at all okay and uh, if you have a card whose information frequently changes you know uh, like uh, a scorecard of a cricket game that you are interested in or uh, if it is a timer or, uh, or a if it is a countdown timer or, or it is a, a clock you know you have to keep on constantly keep uh, keep on updating it so uh, for those cases you could use a, a live card live cards are like uh, widgets on your android phone uh, the home screen widgets that you place on your android phone they uh, have a remote service or a process that keeps on up updating them from the background okay so uh, you could use live cards you could use static cards and uh, one primary uh, one way of uh, you know uh, interacting with glass is by using voice okay so, so when you say okay glass uh, okay glass is uh, like a standby command for your glass when you say okay glass your glass device becomes standby and if you want to say something like take a picture okay it will kick off a camera application for you or if you want to record a video it kicks off a application for you and if you are, if you have your own application that does something specific like you know uh, it reads a book for you you could say okay card uh, read a book and that will activate your corresponding application got it and you can also get uh, voice up, uh, voice input like you know uh, i want to go to you know is okay glass book a ticket for example uh, okay glass book a bu bu book a bus ticket okay so you can also get inputs from glass right so okay glass book a bus ticket prepares your uh, glass to you know uh, book a ticket and it, glass in turn will ask you where are you going right then you could say your destination so you could use voice inputs to just activate your uh, application or you could also use uh, your voice commands to get uh, further inputs using glass so uh, it's a trigger I'll update this. Uh, so this is how you map a trigger to your application. Okay, these are all small code chunks. I'll be able to post this online so you could get this. So uh, sorry. So the, the resolution is 614 to 360. I was wrong. Uh, so whenever you design your application for Glass, you know you don't have to. If you have an Android application, we are tempted to port the same Android activity to Glass. Uh, you shouldn't do that because uh, they are used in different ways and the way of interacting with uh, a, a mobile application and the glass glassware is entirely different right so you have to redesign your ui and you shouldn't have any complex touch gestures or controls to interact with your applications because the only way you're going to interact using touch is your uh, trackpad on the sides right so the, the amount of gestures are very very limited so these are uh, some of the guidelines that you do and the last one is Android Wear. So uh, Android Wear is, uh, you know, uh, it's a watch that is currently being developed by Google, and uh, it's a, uh, it's only allowed uh, invite only. Uh, you know, uh, you you have to be invited in order to join the developer preview program, and uh, most of them gets invited. Uh, uh, the, once you get invited, you will be given a set of uh, uh, steps to follow in order to. Uh, test your uh, you know applications on uh, the Android Wear emulator, okay. So uh, what you can do currently with uh, Android uh, Wear is very very limited. You can only show notifications on your watch. That's that's the only thing you can do. Android Wear does not uh, support traditional Android application, but still it is based on Android. So uh, the only thing you can do now is you know uh, you can notify your user uh, using notifications. So you should be familiar with these notifications and right. So you can do the same with your watch. Nothing more, nothing less. And uh, there are two uh, skins. Uh, you, uh, it could be either be round or you could have uh, an uh, that is square. 
and uh, if you want to show uh, notifications you can either use uh, stacks, stacks are where you one notification is stacked against the other, you tap on the more and you can look at them one by one, swipe through and look at them. And uh, the other thing is pages where you could have at most two pages where you could uh, scroll, uh, slide it to the left and see more information on the notification. So this is a code that uh, shows you how to show notifications. This is not much different from the same uh, notification compatibility. You use a notification compatibility to build notifications for Android. You use the same code to build notifications for your device also. And at last, uh, you can also act, interact with your notifications. Like uh, if you have an Android phone that runs Android 4.x uh, versions, uh, when you get an email, for instance, you know you can drag the notification and you could either tap on reply or you could uh, interact with your notification directly from the notification itself. So that is also available with uh, Android Wear. Okay, you can also interact with your notifications. So this code shows you how to interact with the notification and the other way you could interact with your uh, Android Wear is by using voice. Okay, voice has become a standard way of uh, giving, uh, interacting with Google devices, your phone, your, uh, you know, Android Wear as well as Google Glass. So uh, that's about it. And do you have any questions? Any of you? No one? Right. So, any information about uh, Project ARA? So, Project ARA, uh, I'm not actively following the project. The only news I heard was that you know they broke the screen of the glass the day before the presentation. Uh, it is uh, there was one initiative called as Phone Blocks, I think. Uh, I, I I was uh, I heard that you know maybe a year ago Phone Blocks was just a concept and. Uh, not much, uh, I'm not even sure if it is being powered by Android, but, uh, but no, most probably. It's now being done by Google, so Motorola has constructed it. Yeah, so yeah. So one year ago they made a survey saying okay. that people should uh, support it. Okay. And lots of people supported it and it finally went through as a project in Motorola. Okay, so, uh, but this device was shipped from uh, a German facility. I don't know. You don't know that. And another, another thing is all the Project Tara modules are going to be 3D printed at the commercial scale. Okay. So each and every module that is going to be produced is going to be 3D printed. Okay. Not like a normal Regular manufacturing, manufacturing. Yeah. phone manufacturing. It's going to be 3D, 3D printed and they are pr developing a special unit for 3D printing all these uh, mobile phones. Okay. So I'm not actually uh, actively following okay. that uh, project. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? So, okay, nice. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs>